Hi guys, Archie Luxury. Go to f2bbs.com. www.f2bbs.com. The last bastion of free speech on the interweb. Hi guys, Archie Luxury on the Archie Luxury channel. Today guys, I'm doing paid review 21 QA 47. Quick, 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 quick. Wristwatch check. I'm wearing my Submarina date. And I'm wearing my Explorer 2. Okay, this here is for my good friend, John. John, here we go. Sir Archibald Chesterfield III, I do not want to be so subject of any YouTube vid, but email is fine. Oh. Oh, he doesn't want a vid. Oh. Uh, I tell you what. Instead of getting too personal, let's talk about his dilemma there. Uh, let's not mention where he's from or where he lives, but he basically said to me, uh, he's got a 5170P. That's the manual wind Patek. Um, it's the manual wind Patek Philippe chronograph. Absolute killer in platinum. P for platinum. Uh, but he finds himself lusting for a 5270P, that's the perpetual calendar chrono <coughs> graph. Um, so he's he's um, he was he was saying to me um, he, he's he's looking at this and he asked my advice. The other watch he was he was looking at the other watch he was looking at is a five three seven zero so he's got a bit of a dilemma here sorry let me just run these by me by you again here a 52 5270p what is that exactly that is a grand complication grand complication that's an absolute that's the perpetual calendar chronograph and the other piece is the 5370 the 53 Five three seven zero, and that is a double split. Oh my God, that's a big, big. And he asked me my opinion. He's asking my opinion, and he said, you know, should he sell off pieces to get an amazing piece? And I kind of said to him, I said, you know what? I my advice to him was this. My advice to him was this. I said, look, the first rule number one is I would not be... You don't want to be selling your stuff off wholesale because he'd have to sell some of his existing watches off. You don't want to wholesale them off and then pay full retail for the incoming. You know, I don't mind selling off if I'm buying in the same market. Your retail, you know, you, you get good prices and you get a discount on the the new piece. But if you have to pay a full whack and then they give you wholesale prices, low wholesale on yours, well, that's not kind of good. The other advice is a dealer, a dealer is not really going to be your friend. He's always looking at a dealer. In the casino of life, in the casino of life, a dealer is always going to put himself first. He wants to recoup moolah. He wants to get as much money as possible. That's what he wants to do. He doesn't want to... Uh, he doesn't really want you to do so well. He wants to... He wants to absolutely gouge you. So I, I kind of said to him, I said, look... I understand where you're coming from. What would I do? And I kind of said to him, you know, if you've got a nice, he's got a, he's got about, he's got about three or four paddocks, really nice pieces, including the 5170P. I said, would I sell it to buy a super amazing piece? I said, not really. I said, instead of getting a double split or a perpetual calendar chronograph, what about add something lesser? Like a, I said to him, if you're in, if you're in Singapore, the, the watch I would add would be a 5130. 
Because the Singaporeans, they always want the latest and greatest. They don't understand that Paddock is not about latest and greatest. I'd be looking at buying a pre-owned 5130. That'd be a great watch. And I said to him, I said, the problem with consolidating all into one watch is, if you died anyhow, the wife's just going to sell it. You know, she's not really going to love it or treat it as an heirloom like you would. And I, I think sometimes it's better to have some, a couple of lesser pieces than one amazing piece. And, and I, I've been there myself. You know, I'm not at the same level. Like this guy, the funny thing is he's got a 5170P. I dream of having a 5170. 5170 in any metal. You know, forget platinum. So he has the grand poobah of manual wine paddocks, manual wine chronograph paddocks. And so for him, he's looking at a double split or he's looking, he's looking at a double split. I mean, that's a split second chronograph. My God, that's a super, super duper, 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 whooper piece. Would I, would I, um, would I trade up? Look, I, I think sometimes it's good to buy a piece like that if you've got the money without having to trade in some of your other lesser pieces. If you've got to trade things in, uh, it's a bit hard. But if you can just buy it, you get a big, if you get a big, big hit, I think it would be very cool. They're a great piece. And I gotta be honest with you, it doesn't matter what Patek Philippe you buy, they are all beautiful. Paddock is, pa there is no crappy, nasty paddock. They're just absolute, when you buy a 5196, that's just gorgeous. And it can punch its weight against your 5170P, your, your manual wine chronograph. So for me, I kind of said, you know, you buy these things, the emotion and the love of them, I don't know if I'd be trading in pieces. I don't think that's a good way to go. Number one, a dealer's not going to be your friend. They're always looking at skinning you both ends. Number two, number two, the whole thing is, is that if you, if you do that, you know, I'd say you're better off. Maybe there's more enjoyment getting a few more, like a world time, 5130, I gave him an example. I said, you've got a 5170, 5130 was the biggest world time they ever made. It was 39.5 mils. The model after that went smaller, 38.5. I reckon that is a absolute stunner. And I kind of, I think sometimes, yes, it's amazing to have these double splits or perpetual calendars, but it's also nice to have a progression. You know, you have a few paddocks and you like in my case, I, I could sell all my, my five off and get get something amazing like that. Yeah, yeah, of course I'd love that. But then again, you know, my 5035, that's the one I got for when I turned 40. And I sold it because I ran out of money and I bought a piano with the money because my wife had a car accident and then I bought it back. And then the world time. The world time has been a... Grail, I remember swimming in a pool in Padilla, dreaming, what would I buy if I had unlimited money? What would I buy? And I thought, you know what? I'd love a, I'd love a world time, paddock world time. And I even remember saying, do I want white gold, platinum, yellow gold, rose gold? They go, oh no, what, platinum's too ostentatious. I'd go for white gold. I remember thinking about that in the pool. And then I got one. And then I and then I got a yellow one. I got a yellow one now. I had a white one, and you know it's it's kind of the progress, the journey. And then, oh my five one two seven. You know I got that because I, years ago I had a five one zero seven, and the five one two seven was the next version. And ah, oh, I just loved it. I loved it so much, and ah, oh, it brings back memories. And then the 5196, I've always loved the 5196, classic Calatrava at its best. So, although I, I don't think the idea of 
rolling pieces into an amazing piece is a terrible, it's not a terrible idea, but I prefer to have the memories along the way. This collection tells the story. So that was my advice there. And um, I had a nice chat to him. He's a lovely guy. He's a cool, cool guy, lovely guy. Um, and, you know, he he also, the other thing he was thinking of doing was he's got an Aquanaut, he was thinking about selling that and the 5196 and getting a 5712. That's the Nautilus 5712. That's the, the minor complication one. And I said, you know what? Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. I think the 5167, that's the, the Aquanaut. Absolute classic, beautiful watch. The 5196, man, it may not be the most expensive paddock, but you could meet the queen or, or you know, heads of state with that. It's just so elegant. And it's not about price or it's just so beautiful. And, and that's what I, I sort of said to him. I said, sometimes it's nice to have a, your collection tells you your, your journey. So that was, uh, that was my, my advice to him. Um, and he, he said, if you got a 5270, that's the 5270. That is the perpetual calendar chronograph. Absolutely good. It's a grand complication. Uh, I'm just thinking, will I ever end up wearing it as a daily? Uh, if not, it become a safe queen for special occasions. Would it be a waste? Um, look, only you can decide whether it's a waste or not. It's your money. I, I think the beautiful thing about it is it's your, you get to control. You get to call the shots. It's your money. It's your watch. Would it be, would you wear it as a daily? My God, what a beautiful watch. You know, I, I got to be honest with you. I went crazy into your, into paddocks. I love my paddocks. Sold off everything to get paddocks. And I got to tell you, man, Rolex. Rolex is great for Asia. Rolex is great for Asia. You have a sweaty day. You get all sweaty where you just go and put it in the sink, rinse it, and off you go. Submarina Explorer 2. That's all you got to do. Paddocks, I think, are for more special occasions. If you drive a Rolls Royce everywhere, it's never a special occasion. If you only drive it once a month, very carefully, it's always special. So, yeah, that's my advice there. The casino of life. Tell me what you're going to put your chips on. I'm Archie Luxury. This has been a paid review. Thank you so much, John. I didn't name what city you're from or any personal details I just kind of I wanted to do this video because it's a great topic it really had me thinking had me thinking and um, thank you so much for your paid review guys like subscribe tell your friends remember I can't survive if I don't get paid reviews without the paid reviews I cannot survive I can't survive please think about getting a paid review done Okay, guys, see you in the next one. Ciao! Paid review, 50 US dollars. Look in the description how to organize one now. Hi, guys, Archie Luxury. And who do I recommend in America? In America, who do I recommend for quality pre owned wristwatches? David SW, David SW, David SW. Go to davidsw.com. He is the best, the greatest pre-owned dealer in all of the United States of America. David SW, David SW, David SW. Hey guys, Archie Luxury. Who do I recommend for watches in Brisbane and Sydney? Vintage Watch Co. That's correct. Vintage Watch Co. in Brisbane Arcade in Brisbane and the Strand Arcade in Sydney. Vintage Watch Co. Brisbane and Sydney. Ronnie, I've known him since the late 90s. Ronnie 
is a top bloke. Luke is a great guy. Vintage Watch Co. That is who I recommend in Australia. Check out Vintage Watch Co. and the guys' amazing range of watches. They also do service and repairs. Vintage Watch Co. That is where the pontiff goes. You know, some of my paddocks came from Vintage Watch Co. That's right, guys. Vintage Watch Co.